SpaceX Starlink's DoD counterpart, Star Shield, AI controlled? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hang out. Talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and Star Shield. Basically, what the heck is Star Shield? And how is it possibly AI controlled or might be AI controlled? This is some scary stuff, but I've been getting a lot of questions about what is Starlink compared to Star Shield? Are they the same? Is it basically the government just like renting time on a Starlink, let's say device, a Starlink satellite just for their own for a specific period of time? Or is it specific satellites that are made just for the government. What exactly is this Star Shield thing? So I'm gonna give you that information today and hopefully you find it interesting. I did because when I was doing research on this, I didn't know myself. And some of the things that came out of this research, I was really kind of scared about. I mean, I have to be honest, this is just, you know, we're getting to a level where there's so much control that when you start putting networks into networks and then controlling them with AI. Anyways, we'll get into that before the end of this video. Before we get into this article I found over on Slash Gear, I wanna ask that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, check them out. They are free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoyed this video, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. If you have already subscribed, that's awesome. If not, please do so. And then click this little button over here, notification button. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Matter of fact, it's Friday today and I will be live. Check out the JC Live show and get in there and comment. Get into the chat. There's a lot of you guys that show up on Friday and I thank you for that. Also, if you want more Starlink content just like this, I'll put a little link over here to a playlist of just Starlink stuff, about 260 plus videos I've created in the last 32 months. Check them out after you're done watching this video. Also, if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina, or you can use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN, and you're gonna get 15 additional percent off at checkout just for using that promo code or URL. So now that all the housekeeping is done, let's get into this article and then I'll give you my commentary on it. And then of course, of course, I wanna hear from you down below. What are your thoughts on this? So we're gonna first start out with this Star Shield. What the heck is it? What is Star Shield in comparison to Starlink? The article starts out by saying, as one of the most reliable and efficient space launch providers in the entire industry, it was not surprising that SpaceX has been entrusted with defense contracts left and right from spy orbiters to next generation GPS satellites, absolutely. However, the US Space Force recently unveiled a commercial space strategy that seeks to deepen its ties between the US national defense apparatus and the commercial space sector, meaning SpaceX. Within the report, the service heavily emphasizes satellite communication or SATCOM as one of the core pillars of its strategy. Quote, the ability of global SATCOM is critical to the posture and mission effectiveness of modern war fighting for the United States and its allies. For example, Ukraine has been fielding SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet terminals to provide a host of battlefield functions for troops in its battle against Russia. Ranging from command and control, C2, to recon and intelligence gathering. As such, it is not at all surprising that Space Force is interested in conscripting Starlink for national defense. But as a civilian-centric system, Starlink is vulnerable to jamming and its users can be geolocated. 
very, very important there, making it less than ideal for battlefield communications. SpaceX's solution is Star Shield, a militarized version of Starlink for defense customers only. What's interesting is the satellite's payload. Unlike Starlink, the Starshield satellites have high assurance cryptographic capabilities. In other words, Starshield can broadcast end-to-end -end encrypted, jam-safe communications similar to those seen on existing SATCOM infrastructure. The satellites also have laser communication equipment to provide extremely high-speed data transmission. Starlink also transforms SpaceX into a satellite factory for the U.S. The company has noted that it can build satellite buses to support the most demanding customer payload missions. Presumably, SpaceX has built customizable satellite bus that can be retrofitted Lego style with different sensors and payloads to meet the specific needs of government customers, whether it's secure communications or intelligence gathering or maybe something else. This dual role as a satellite builder and launch provider positions SpaceX uniquely in the industry as a one-stop shop for all government space-based needs. <sighs> lots and lots of money, lots of money. The service fits right into the future Joint All Domain Command and Control, or the JADC2, once again, C2 is Command and Control, Joint All Domain. This is important, listen to this. That doctrine of the Department of Defense or the DOD, which aims to interconnect all sensors, all fighters and platforms in the use by all branches of the US military and eventually allies into a network of networks governed by artificial intelligence. What? Seamless integration and quicker coordination in combat operations are just one of the main benefits to this doctrine if achieved can provide. Well, how about the negative of all this? It finalizes with, however, the JADC2 hinges on the Pentagon's ability to facilitate accurate, near real time combat data from headquarters to war fighters. It's a massive technical hurdle that Starlink and Star Shield has a potential to solve for good. Should they? With a dozen Star Shield prototypes already launched since 2020 and more in the pipeline, it's clear that whichever future direction the US military is taken, SpaceX will be along for the ride. 100%, absolutely. Now, back to this AI thing. How are you going to make a network of networks, including all of your sensors, all of your fighter, information, all of your platforms, and possibly even the integration of allies information into a network of networks. And then in the center of that place, an AI unit. Are you kidding me? Now, I don't know if you could like rub two brain cells together, or if you've watched the movie War Games with Matthew Broadwick back in the 80s. You remember the Whopper? Yeah, that's McKittrick. Sir, we got a problem. Whopper's not letting me log back on. They can't get in to stand down the vessels. Watch your standby. Yeah, Paul, this is McKittrick. Uh, the Whopper's not letting us back in. I know. No one can get back on. We're trying everything. It's like the entire password file has been wiped out. What are those? Those are launch codes. What are they for? Joshua's trying to find the right code so he can launch the missiles himself. Do you really want to give all of that information, all of that ability, all of that control, all of that C2 command and control to AI? Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't even know. Like, it just simply doesn't make sense to me. Yes, you can make the AI so it's just taking all of the data and boiling it all down, right? Through algorithmic equations, right? And then giving you information. But how about if someone gets into that 
and changes what it does. And now all of a sudden it can actually act upon this information instead of just providing the information. Or how about if it provides the information to your enemy? <laughs> you know, through some type of espionage or some type of spying or some type of other hacking capability. I mean, whenever you put everything or all your eggs into one basket, if that basket drops, you lose everything, right? I'm not that guy. I don't know. This is the U.S. government. And even to think about this strategy just to me makes absolutely no sense. They are, I guess, feeling pretty confident with AI and it won't go rogue. Or someone won't hack into it and change its orders. Like the construct behind it. Like what is its order? What does it do? I mean, I don't know, guys. So anyways... We look at this star shield as basically a Legos of a Starlink satellite that has a ton of modularity to it, right? You can snap on different devices. That's the way I see it, as a bus, as a, a unit, like a base unit. And then you can snap on, let's say, a very high-powered camera for doing some type of surveillance at a high resolution. Maybe snap on some type of sensor for the weather to understand weather conditions. And then snap on another sensor for something a little bit more nefarious. <laughs> I don't know. But you can basically use it as a Lego and keep on snapping on these modules. That's the way I see it. But the bottom line is it is a separate satellite. It's not, at first people thought that Star Shield was basically Starlink satellites that were being operated by the US government without, let's say, the knowledge or any of the information flowing out to SpaceX. And that's really not what's going on here. They are separate. They are specific satellites owned by the US government, by the DOD, by the Department of Defense, launched into space. And so far, there's like 12 of them. And as I said, there's a lot more in the pipeline that will be going up there. So the other thing with Star Shield is it's basically a shield, pardon the pun, for Elon Musk and SpaceX, right? We've seen how the Ukraine breakout between the war with Russia and all that ended up putting Elon into some hot water saying, hey, you know, he should not be in control of international policy and all of this kind of nonsense. Even though we know that Elon Musk gave those SpaceX Starlink kits to the Ukraine when the war broke out, when communication halted because all communication was taken out by the Russians as a humanitarian gesture, right? To help them with emergency aid and whatnot. Not for military use. That happened after a little bit. They found, wow, we can now use this system to do all kinds of military things. And that's what they ended up doing with it. That was not its original intent. Like I said, Star Shield basically will shield Elon Musk and SpaceX from having to make these decisions. He could say, listen, go see the DOD, the Department of Defense, check with Star Shield, and maybe they can give you some type of SATCOMs through the satellites that they have. Or maybe not. Or maybe he'll say, you know what? I'm gonna do it anyways, because I wanna help people. If they use it in a bad way, well, so be it. The same thing holds true with a knife. A knife you could use to cut your steak and eat, or a knife could be used to actually hurt someone, right? The same thing with a pew pew. It's not the device, it's the user of the device, right? Some people don't get that. That's for a whole nother video. Anyways, guys, I wanna know what do you think about this? What do you think about Star Shield actually shielding Elon Musk, number one? What do you think about Star Shield as being that Lego where it can just connect a whole bunch of different modules, all sorts of spy modules, all sorts of different modules, who knows what kind of modules, communication modules, GPS modules, who knows? They can do whatever they want, maybe an E-Node B, so they can use it as a, maybe a wireless cell tower in space, but just for the military. It could be. What do you think about that? And finally, most importantly, what do you think about the possibility of all of these networks, of networks, and an AI running it all in the center of it? Boom. You know what I think. What do you think? 
down below. Let's have this discussion. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, as I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And check out some of my merch, my tees, my shirts, mugs, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> check it all out. Pick something up. Support me and my family. That would be awesome. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay connected. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.